All right, we are gonna go through some accessibility options on the iPad today. Uh, so first we're gonna go to settings here. All right, and under settings, uh, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see general, all right? So once, once you're in general, you'll notice over here, uh, you'll see some accessibility features. So we're gonna just kind of go through and explain some of these things uh, as we go through. All right, the, the first thing we see up here is voiceover. Um, voiceover, once you turn it on, um, it's basically, notice most of your accessibility features are going to have some directions directly underneath it too. So once you turn on your voiceover, your voiceover is on. Once you select something, you'll notice you get this little black bar around. I've got my volume off at the moment. Uh, when you click on your voiceover, it will start to read that and it will read it. Now, um, you, you basically imagine that if you're blind, so you're not really going to necessarily see anything. When you click on something, it will just read whatever you tap. All right, so it, it, it's a nice feature. Um, even if you are not visually impaired, you can still use that. Some students will use this as well. Now, underneath this, um, I'm going to turn this off for a second. Okay, now one thing to remember, once you select it, you'll, you'll kind of tap your finger and that will kind of read it. To uh, actually turn off voiceover, you'll double tap it. So once it reads, you double tap it. Now, that will play a part on several things when, when you use this. Uh, now, underneath this, you'll see your speaking rate. Uh, you can adjust the speed of the volume. Now, uh, a lot of people will kind of have that volume moved over here on the far right-hand side, um, and they will they will read that. Now, it doesn't. It, it's for the end user. So it, it, from the teaching standpoint, a lot of teachers sometimes are bugged that it goes so fast for some of those students. But if, if you are a, a truly visually impaired student, you pick up that thing very quickly. You, you pick up the content. So you, you might have, have it all the way on the far right. Now, over here, you can use these things. You can change that if you want to give yourself some hints. Um, and that's some things that you'll have. Now, underneath here, um, you will see that there is Braille. Uh, features over here. Now you can kind of change your speech. Let's go through that first. You don't have to have it set on kind of that Siri sound. If you want to change that, you can go there and change uh, your default dialect. You can change that however you want. Um, just be aware you can change those. Um, you can also go down here under Braille. You've got some options too. I've got mine set to six dot but uh, do want to kind of show you, you do have uncontracted uh, eight dot braille uh, over here as well as contracted braille. So you do have some options there that you can change um, if you want to do that. Um, now, we'll go back to that for a second. Um, other than that, you've got some voiceover features. That one, a lot of people don't really have too many issues with that. Uh, now, under Zoom, this one is a, a very handy tool so first of all, we're going to turn this on. Now, you do have, again, you have your directions underneath it here, so you can kind of see this. You're going to kind of double tap with three fingers. I have noticed if you do this motion with three, some people, depending on your fingers, sometimes it reads as two. So it put a little bit of a separation between your fingers, and it seems to work a little bit better. Now, you do have some options here where if the zoom region, okay? I, I personally choose the full screen zoom, but there is an option here where you do a window zoom as well. You kind of saw it flash for a second. So when you do this, um, with the window zoom, once I double tap three fingers, you're going to notice you get this little content window and you can kind of move it across the screen as you want. Okay, now to get out of it, um, just double tap three fingers again and you get out of it. Now, under the window zoom, I'm going to go back to full screen zoom and kind of show you some things on this one. So again, I'm going to use my three fingers. When I double tap, um, I, you can see that. And then from there, I'm going to kind of show you this. So if I just kind of drag my screen, I can do this. Now, it's sometimes that might be too much zoom. Okay, so if you do this, you can kind of pull it back towards you. Okay, so you can double tap, you can zoom in by moving up, and you can move back. Okay, and then to move across your screen, just kind of drag it across like a piece of paper. You can see it on my screen. There's a little bit of delay on this video here. So you kind of get a general idea of what it does, okay? Again, to get out of it, just double tap three fingers and you're out of it, okay? So I'm gonna turn that off so it doesn't interfere with some of my accessibility features here. Whatever accessibility feature you use, just be aware sometimes they can affect things. The next one on this list is invert colors. So 
first of all, when you display, it doesn't have an effect at all. So I'm going to turn this on, kind of show you that yes, my screen has inverted the colors, but again, on my display has done absolutely nothing. You can kind of see over here, yes, I have turned it on, uh, but you don't see that. Okay, now that's very handy for some of your students. Um, staring at uh, black text on the white background is hard on your eyes, but we also have some students that, that will take advantage of that. Uh, it, just mixing it up throughout the day will help them out. Now you can also do a grayscale. Again, this doesn't show anywhere on the screen, but as you can kind of see, everything now is black and white on my iPad. Okay, so you do have invert colors and you have grayscale as well. Under, under uh, speech, you have um, some options too. Now, I turn this on, uh, which will allow you, like if you have some text that's highlighted, which, um, let's see, we will use a book. Let's see if we got anything on this one. Okay, yeah, let's, let's use, let's go to a website or something. Let's just go to a website here. Um, well, sure, we can actually probably use this one here. Um, if I have some text, you can kind of see it. Uh, that's not going to be a good site. Okay, we want something that has some actual text on it here. So let's go to, uh, we'll just do this one, Fox News. Uh, I'm just choosing a website. You can choose whatever website you want to use. Uh, this one I know has text on it though. All right. Let's try again. Okay, so once you have this here, if I have some text, as long as it allows me to select some text here, all right. So notice over here, I now have a little feature that allows me to hit copy to find or speak. Well, I want to hit speak. Once I hit speak, it will read through that little portion uh, and it reads that text to me. Okay, now you can also hit pause or you can hit stop uh, to get, get you back to wherever you want to be on that little portion. Okay, now uh, you also can have the highlight content as it is spoken, um, which that's a little handy feature as well when you're doing this. Um, you've got some features that you can do. Some of your students might even use a speak screen down here where they just basically swipe down two fingers uh, and it will read the whole screen. Okay, depending on the students that you have or depending on you, you might want to take advantage of some of those options that you have there. Now, the larger text feature, if you should turn this on, uh, you can kind of see, we'll move this, this little slider. It's on the second slider right now, but if I move it to the right, you will notice uh, that it actually affects everything. Okay, and we're back here. Um, we just kind of finished larger text, and then I lost my feed there. Um, the next little option that we have on this list is bold text. Okay, now you will see bold text. If you turn it on, basically it will give you this warning. And what that really affects, I'm going to hit cancel. What that affects is it basically makes all of your, uh, all of your basic font is bold. Now where that really comes in handy, underneath your, your different app descriptions here, you'll see that's kind of a regular font that you have. It actually turns that font bold, makes it a little easier to stand out. Um, and, and I know some people that use that and it is very handy for some people. Now this next one right here, button shapes. It, when you turn this on at first, you may or may not notice this. Um, but if you notice, pay attention up here to general. What it does is it basically adds a little shape around your button. It more or less just makes it kind of stand out. So some people like it, some people don't. Your option on that part though. Uh, you can also increase your contrast. Um, and again, this, this one you can turn all of these things on. Um, it, it really comes in handy, especially think of like your iPhone or something like that. Um, it really makes these things stand out a little bit more makes it easier for those people to dial and everything else. So if you want to turn those on, feel free. Yeah, it's just increasing your contrast. Now the reduce motion, this one is kind of an accessibility feature where that really plays a part is more or less um, with your wallpapers. It kind of reduces this. And if you remember uh, when you have this little dynamic background, let's see if this actually works on here you'll kind of see, and I've got this, let me turn this up real quick. Uh, I lock that so you can kind of see. So if I tilt it, you can kind of see it does these little motions, moves back and forth. Um, at least it's moving back and forth on mine. You can kind of see, there you go. 
Um, so that one uh, eats up your battery. Um, it's it's a lot of people like it, and it is a really cool feature. Um, I usually turn mine off personally just because it does go through your battery a little bit more throughout the day. And if you're using it all the time, uh, like I am, um, there we go. Um, it, it, it can cause some issues. So I turn mine off on that. Now these labels, if you want to turn that on, you'll, you're going to notice that it adds these little dots behind your buttons. If you like that, it's just more or less for you. Uh, let's go to this next one though. Uh, under hearing, there's some nice little features here that I think are, are pretty helpful. Uh, first of all, if you do have a hearing aid, a lot of your hearing aids are actually Bluetooth compatible. So if you do that, you can kind of go to hearing aids and you can actually search for it um, if you have it. And if it finds it, you basically just pair it like you would any other Bluetooth device uh, and that would help. Now, these next two features, if you uh, have hearing issues, you probably are well aware of this. This is more for teacher's benefit. Um, when I first started teaching, I had a student who was practically deaf. She was pretty much deaf in one ear. Uh, and there was a video, she had headphones on. Uh, mm -hmm. After the video was over, she basically didn't realize she had missed content. What had happened though is there were two people speaking and in your right channel, you were hearing one person speak and in the left channel, you were hearing the other person answer. So all she heard were the people answering. She never heard the questions. She didn't realize she was missing anything. Okay, and after she mentioned that, then I realized, oh, you're listening to it in stereo. So here's one thing to be aware of. First of all, if you turn on mono audio, if you're wearing the earphones, um, it'll put both channels in both ears. So that's, that's one thing that's going to be helpful for you. The other thing that you can do, um, if you are have prevalency of hearing in one ear, you can move this left or right channel underneath to the ear that you actually hear out of more than others. So if you wanted just your mono audio going through just your right channel, you can move it through your right channel. Now, just so your students don't feel left out or anything else, I would probably have, it, depending on the student, if, if they put both of their, their earphones in, a lot of them will do that just to kind of fit in with everybody else. You can move the right channel, left channel. No one's gonna be the wiser on that. It's nice for you to be aware that that exists though. Okay, under media, uh, you do have some subtitles. So first of all, if you turn on subtitles, you can turn that on um, and it will give you styles and you can actually even click on your default styles if it shows you. And my iPad is frozen again. There we go. Uh, so you got this large text, which if you click on the large text, um, it will make it a little bit larger. Um, your subtitles are a little larger like that. There's a classic layout, which makes it look like the old TVs, um, or you can just use their default style, which looks like that. So you do have some options where you can change that. You can even customize that if you so choose. So be aware that does exist as well. Uh, video descriptions, um, it will, it, anything that has, you can turn that on. It, you have to kind of set that up on the, the end user, uh, or not end user, for the people that are actually creating the videos. But if you do it, it will give you some video descriptions as well. So you might as well turn it on for those people that have that set up. Okay, um, the other thing that you have, um, guided access. This is actually very handy. We have, we've had a lot of students have, that have had, um, we set this up, for students that have autism, for instance. And what this does, like if you turn this on, you're gonna notice that it gives you a passcode. So I'm gonna set a passcode real quick, and I'm just gonna set this as one, two, three, four. Nice password there. Everyone can hack that password. Uh, but once you do this, you can go, and let's say we are going to go into, um, sure, we're going to choose this uh, animal letters. Okay, so once we are using animal letters, get out of this little ad here, lots of ads here. Okay, so we have monster letters. Now at the bottom, if you uh, triple click the home button three times, you're going to notice that you are brought to this little screen. Now this one is sideways, so I apologize. Um, it will look normal on you. Um, and what happens if we hit start, which we will, it says guided access has started. Now, here's where this becomes an advantage. If I try to get out of the app, but just by closing it, I can't. If I hit the home button, 
I can't. And it gives me this warning saying that uh, the guided access is turned on. The only way to get out of that, and, and this is also good for students who might be younger, who just accidentally get out of it. If you want to lock in your students on one uh, app, this is a handy little feature. So to get out of it, if you triple click the home button again, okay, then it gives you that password. So we're gonna use this amazing password of one, two, three, four, and now it brings me out of this, and in the top left, which actually is on the top right for you all, uh, if I hit end, it takes me out of that. Now I can click on the home button, I'm out of there, okay? Nice feature. Uh, you can use it for a lot of your students that have disabilities, but you can also use it for uh, young children or anything else. Now, um, you can kind of do some other things. Now, you've probably noticed already um, that I have this little cursor thing moving around here. That actually is assist assistive touch. Uh, and when you turn on assistive touch, basically turn it on, uh, this is good for a couple reasons. It's good for uh, some people, let's say, that you were only born with, like, one finger. Okay, well, from there, obviously, some of these little gestures where you close your hand, things like that, um, that becomes an issue, or if you have cerebral palsy or something, you don't have the muscle control necessarily, um, this becomes handy. For instance, if I tap on this, now you're going to see that it brings me up a bunch of other windows. Okay, so I can now just simply tap on the things that I want, and I can get out of those things as I choose. The other thing that we have found, which is kind of a happy coincidence here, um, for some students who have maybe broken their, their home button or something like that, this will give you a little bit more life on your iPad uh, as well. So even if you don't have any disabilities, you might find some useful features for that as well. Okay, now there's, there's one thing I want to go through uh, that I think is very handy uh, that we haven't really talked about at all. Um, if we go back to our, okay, you have to do two things. Okay, first of all, we will turn our voiceover on, uh, but before we do that, uh, we're going to go back to our speech. Okay, now, uh, actually I lied, not speech, uh, voiceover, sorry, I lied. So under voiceover, if you remember, we had our Braille settings over here, and we could kind of choose the way that was set up. But if we go to our rotor, which we have not discussed this at all, but under rotor, there are a lot of things that you can turn on. Okay, now voiceover uh, has to be on. So first, this isn't going to show up, but I've taken off a lot of these things, but at the very, very, very bottom, of that list, you will see there's one called Braille Screen Input. This is going to be very handy, especially if you are blind. All right, so once we have turned that on, we go back to our voiceover, which is basically just one screen back, and then once I turn the voiceover, my voiceover is now on. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do. Okay, first of all, you're going to notice this little screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of grab my screen and I'm just going to kind of rotate it, okay? And once I rotate it, you're going to see that I get this little portion that pops up here and I'm going to rotate it across until I find my Braille screen input. Now, because I'm holding it, it's going to give me my six dot Braille key input and it's going to be put it into like a, a landscape thing. So first of all, if you're blind, I'm going to put this down as uh, on the screen, okay? So it's going to be on tabletop mode. Now, the first question that I had when I first saw this is, well, if you're blind, how do you know where those dots are, okay? Not gonna be a big issue because we're, now, let me back up a little bit. Before we do this, a normal Braille uh, typewriter, if you will, or a no, brailler, that's what they call it. Normal brailler will have three uh, keys on both sides and then the, the, where your thumbs are is where, really where the space bar is, okay? Where you have that. So, uh, I'm just gonna put my three fingers here and when I double tap, Okay, you're gonna notice wherever I am at on the screen, so if, let's say I'm gonna put both of these down here, if I just double tap like I did a second ago, let me kind of move this uh, keyboard down a little bit. I get the mouse out, or not mouse, my cord out of the way as well. So again, let's say I'm up here. If I double tap up here, then it's gonna raise my dots down here. The only key thing is just to remember when you're there, don't move your fingers too much. So for instance there, I can go through I can do all my normal Braille keys like I normally would. Now, if I'm inside of an app, then I can actually Braille. So if I was in 
uh, pages, for instance, or in notes or anything like that, I could actually type in or Safari, any of those things, uh, and I could actually Braille like I normally would, and it would actually understand what I'm trying to do. Now, I just had something interesting happen to me when I was making this video. First of all, I was not selected on anything. So, one thing to remember is when you're using voiceover, and if you're displaying where there is no audio, a lot of your little helpful hints are not there. So, for instance, right now, when I was trying to swipe, it wasn't necessarily letting me swipe unless I use three fingers. But if I swipe with one, notice right here, it doesn't do anything. So the one thing, and that was my clue, is when I click on an app, it normally if I have my voiceover on and there's volume going on, uh, even though it says sound effects is on, it's displaying through my AirPlay, so it's not quite working for me. So here's one thing to remember. To swipe, to go to different pages, you're going to use three fingers. So if I want to go back and forth, use three fingers, and go back across, and there you go. Now. To get back to my settings, I'm going to click on this once, okay, and then if, it, if I have my voiceover on, it would, it would basically say settings once you read it. To select it, double tap on it, then I'm inside my settings again. Now, if I go to my voiceover, click on it, there's voiceover. Notice over here, I'm going to click over here on the far left where it says voiceover. I don't know if you can see this or not, but if I double tap there, it still turns it off, okay, because it's, it's set up for people uh, who are visually impaired. All right, so... Other than that, we've got the Braille keyboard, we've got some of those little features on there as well, uh, video descriptions, um, other things under accessibility features you might want. Um, this is not really an accessibility feature, uh, but your brightness, okay? Depending on your students there, you also can uh, change your text size uh, all directly from your display and brightness. So that's another place where you can go. Um, the other little portion, do not disturb. It used to be under, uh, used to be somewhere else. You know, if I remember, it was under accessibility features. But there's, this is a nice little feature too for people. Um, if you turn this on at first, you, and be very careful of this with your iPhone too. Everything that goes through, um, like when people call you, you won't get those phone calls or anything else like that. Um, it's great if you're in a meeting. But if you just turn it on randomly and don't realize what you're doing, uh, you could miss some very important information. Uh, I personally have mine scheduled. So you'll kind of see from, uh, I have one-year-old twins right now. So basically at 9.30 uh, to 6.30 in the morning, if you try to call me or email me or anything else like that, uh, it doesn't go through. Now, I do allow calls on my phone, uh, basically from very important people. You can kind of select that of who you can allow calls from during that time. Um, you'll also notice that if you have repeated calls, uh, that they do allow you to get in there and they, they can message you past that. So be aware of that. Um, but it's, it's nice. Um, it, it's probably saved my marriage multiple times because uh, at first, spe specifically with the iPad, I might be in bed. My wife goes to bed a little bit earlier than I do. Um, and I would read and then I'd get an email or something else like that. The screen would light up. Um, and I would get that little noisy message, uh, and that would bother her. So that one is something you need to be aware of that does exist. Um, other than that, I think that will be it for right now.